Well, good morning and welcome to Business Breakthrough for January 2024. And we've got a couple of great interviews this morning and we're going to get going uh, with the first one of those. So I'm going to introduce you, Alan Southcombe, um, who runs an organisation called Your 2050. Now, Alan, um, <clears throat> just before we get into actually what tw Your 2050 is, you want to just say hello and introduce yourself and, and, and contextualise this. And then we'll have a little bit of a chat about what you're doing with Your 2050. Alan, over to you. Great. Fantastic. And well, thanks very much. Good morning, everybody. And uh, thank you for the um, invitation. Really appreciate it. Yeah, so my name is uh, Alan Southcombe. Um, and I uh, run this platform, which is an ideas sharing and collaboration platform. Just by way of background, um, I'm a, a lawyer by training, but spent most of my career in financial services um, and um, corporate finance. Um, I do some uh, sort of some in-house uh, legal work as well. So it's always been very much in the uh, the, the deal making world. So even though I'm trained as a lawyer, I much prefer the uh, the commercial um, de deal side of of things. Um, and that probably in a way uh, sort of led to my thinking around the platform as well, because it is a discussion space um, is a place for people to come together with diverse ideas um, and at the end of the day we all want to have a, an agreement so that we can all move forward so that's the, the background of that I le live in uh, Newbury um, where I've been for the last five years but spent a lot more time actually working in the city um, earlier on in my career. Brilliant thank you exactly. so your 2050 so 2050 uh, clearly implies a date um, and I'm sure there's some good, strong significance to that. So I'm going to ask you, so you just tell us, what is your 2050? What's this all about? Great. Thanks very much. <clears throat> okay. So, um, I mean, essentially, what it's looking to do is to help um, unite um, private organisations. Now, you know, whether it's in the corporate world, it could be a, a business network, a charity, a trade association. Lots of people have lots of ideas um but how do, how does the people that run them get to hear them how do all the members get to hear them and that was the sort of issue which i come up a lot um, in my own uh, career and um the essence behind um your 2050 is that all of the posting on the platform is done anonymously so the way that it works um everybody has to be invited onto the platform which is not a problem but once you're invited in and effectively go over the wall and you're actually in the world of your 2050, that's when the uh, anonymity starts. Uh, and so the anonymity working together with people working within private communities basically means that everybody has an equal voice because when a post is made, nobody knows whether it came from the CEO or the person who joined um, last week. So it's a, it's a democratic um, space within organisations as it is driving towards uh, um, uh, people being united because, you know, as we, again, personal experience, you might be in a meeting and there's always going to be people who are vocal and there's going to be people that are sitting on ideas. Um, in another situation, you might find that a leader of a group uh, announces a particular policy um, and how many people are going to ch challenge that once the policy has been stated how is it going to be challenged but on your 2050 because all the posting is done uh, anonymously people can uh, say what they think about it and in fact because it is um, anonymous um, and there isn't actually a personal target people behave actually very conservatively so, you know, unlike you might see in the public domain and social media where people hide behind uh, anonymity and can be quite um, toxic in what they say within their own community, I mean, essentially people are looking to improve their community anyway. So the anonymity golden thread effectively is the principle of separating the idea from the individual. Um, mm. So ideas themselves are powerful. We want ideas to grow uh, and to do it to, to develop. Um, but how important is it? Who says it? And as we know, again, in our personal lives and within organisations and our work experience, 
people can actually take exception to an idea just by knowing <laughs> who said it, or people might be in favour of an idea just because they said they, they said it. So it's, it's it, that 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 is the thing which the anonymity um, rem removes. So you know, effectively, you know, for any member, it is a it's a, it's a safe space. People can be as honest and um, genuine genuine as as they as they want to be. So it's a tool to support internal communications in a in a business environment and and praising and sorting out and, and assessing what's going on, um, which um, you know a lot of organisations are very poor at. Um, yeah. uh, although I, I suspect uh, it, it, if you look at it from the point of view of a an aspiring business uh, young business owner or, or 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 manager, it could be quite a threatening thing to have to think about engaging because. Because of the anonymity, um, and, and would need managing quite, you know, or, or your perception might need that it need need managing as you go. So I, I think it's both. For, for me, my take away from that is it's both quite innovative and quite brave um, as a thing to get involved in. But you can certainly see the value because it would, as you say, gives voice to, to the whole business. So let me ask you, what 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 actually took you to what you know what what was it that, that triggered that fire and said, oh, this is a really good thing to do. What took you there? Yeah. Okay. And thanks so much. And also, thank you for mentioning the the twenty fifty, which is part of the name of the, of the website, which goes back to the beginning of the story before I started getting involved with um, you know, specific organisations. Um, and I mentioned the word democracy, um, you know, within organisations, and organisations do need democracy. But it was actually, you know, say five six years ago. And there were a lot of um, elections going on. So it was actually sort of in the world of democracy and politics, where, uh, as we know, the closer and it's going to happen again now, <laughs> the closer you get to the election date, the promises get more and more extreme um, and probably unreasonable. Um, and there's a lot of short termism going on. Um, there's obviously, you know, the words when we always hear about um, silos, uh, whether it's pyramids, all decision-making processes are, are done within quite very old old structures. And so what I was thinking about when uh, I first had the idea was, again, you know, going into the you know, election booth, you have one cross, and obviously you're effectively voting for an individual because there's a name on your ballot slip. But at the same time, your cross has to represent what you think about everything you know whether it's the economy the environment transport or whatever you just got one cross and the thought then came to my mind well how about you know in that sort of experience which again as I say the anonymity of the ballot box that is one of the rare times when we can go in and be anonymous you know if you were able to just express a policy idea and that's really where the idea of the platform came from, because you can go on, you can share an idea, you know, whether it's a policy idea or a strategy idea with your group. Um, so it's gone beyond a vote effectively. But once you've put it out there, it can it can then be developed, but also developed anonymously. Um, so it can be just you know say a suggestion. Platform set up so that questions can be asked. Um, unanswered as well um the um the moderation of the platform as well um, is is important because each community mo moderates itself so yeah, the, the the short answer to your question it started off in the world of the public world of um, politics and, and democracy but it soon became apparent um you know different things i was listening out for that you know effectively Democracy is, as we know, a means of solving problems. Uh, and as I say, the, the organisations I mentioned earlier on, you know, the networks, the corporates, etc., they've all got problems and democracy can help to, to, to solve them. So mm -hmm. that's that's the journey that I've been on. And the 2050, again, in particular, is to draw on long-term thinking. Mm -hmm. um, and again, one of the features, just to mention about the platform, everything that goes on there stays there and uh, we hear in the news about certain platforms where <laughs> things tend to di disappear um, but everything that goes on stays on there 
Um, but also, if an individual expresses an opinion and then they want to change it in the you know, six, 12 months time, it's a lot easier to do that if you're posting as anonymous because people, you know, it's quite, it's quite, in fact, it's actually part of life <laughs> to move on and change your opinions. And in fact, the platform's encouraging people to do that, to listen to other people and to change your own opinion. Um, and you can go in anonymously um, and express a, a new view about it. And, you know, indeed, in you know, early days, uh, I think it is the case, is that, you know, generally it is difficult to change your opinion um, uh, in social media, if you want to put it in that world. So it an anonymity mm. is, is obviously a key part of what you do. And it's, it is, a you know, I absolutely get uh, that that gives people the ability to be more confident to step forward. The, the other side of anonymity is that it also allows people to come up with some quite unthought through, quite un, quite oversimplistic uh, thinking, yeah. um, because mm. there's no real accountability for it. You don't you don't have to go. Okay, actually, hang on a minute. I haven't thought that through. Quite yeah. apart from also the possibly antisocial side, but if you're dealing within a firm, I, I can see that's a manageable thing. But I think mm. the challenge or challenge I would see in that is that you could take out a lot of management time with someone who comes up with an idea they're not really experienced in, they're really not thought through, they've kind of yeah. gone, oh, print for account is rubbish, we could do it so much better if we do it like that, but no experience in that, and now yeah. you're going to take out management time, because actually, um, you know, you have to pay attention to that, because you set the thing up, you can't just ignore it, you set something like that up, so you now have to work yeah. into it. Do, do, you, do you see that as an issue at all? Okay, so the, the way that the, um, the the platform deals with that um, is 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 effectively so. There's an area where questions um, is like well, part of the seeding part of the platform, which is um, where questions can be asked. Now, just in terms of the functionality, the questions are always posted by the moderator, but any member of the community can submit a question. So it's then effectively approved by the moderator and then posted. So that's the process the way it works. So say, for example, questions asked, and then, as you say, you're going to get a, a range of different sorts of answers. Some of them could be specialists in experience, and some of them could have, like, some people might have very limited knowledge about it. But when all the answers uh, appear, there is actually, effectively, a liking, which is effectively an upvoting system. So you say, if there's some sort of quite sort of weak ideas coming forward, that is actually sort of processed by the liking functionality. So you know, in terms of management, getting you know, if management going to go in to see what the responses are, you know, they can quite easily see which are the most liked um, answers. Um, and also, you know, if there's a technical question, um, it's actually possible for the specialist uh, in that area to pin the right answer. So, for example, you know, a question may be asked and maybe it's some you know, quite sort of random answers to the question. But if it's of a technical nature, you know, how do we do this within the organisation sort of thing, then it is possible for the, the moderator or the specialist to... Um, to and pin does it. the moderator know who it is who's asked the question? No. So, so, so the way that that works um, is, and again, you know, the, the moderator, they get, get their role once they're on board. Um, so basically what they would do um, is they would just see the answers um, and just just as anybody else. The, you asked, um, you know, uh, I just worth mentioning about the the antisocial side of things. And I'm glad to say after, I mean, I say it is a startup, early days and friendlier people using it. But um, it's never been necessary to go down the course of uh, identifying anti-social, you know, threatening behaviour and all that sort of thing. But I'm sure in time, <laughs> the, the system uh, will be challenged by that. But effectively, the way that it works um, is that, you know, as I say, there's anonymity on the platform um, to the extent that a, you know, the law is broken. You know, say somebody says something threatening, and name somebody by name or whatever, they say effectively breaking the law. Um, all, all posting is linked to someone's email address. Now, I don't have access 
to the database, but the developer does. So to the extent that you know, regulatory authorities needed to investigate a serious breach of what somebody may say, it is ultimately possible to identify the source. So that's you know, so it, it is anonymous. The posting's anonymous and thing, but ultimately it's not totally anonymous in the sense that somebody can't go go on. Nobody can go onto the system and think, well, I'm just going to drop this one in, and, and nobody knows who it's going to be because if it goes beyond, you know. And I think this is where the whole interesting thing about sort of freedom of speech comes along, because at the end of the day. Um, the, what the system, you know, your twenty fifty is trying to establish you know, is the sort of behaviour you'd like to see in public debate, whether it's on question time or one of the, you know, the sort of behaviour you like to see in 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 serious um, debate and discussion. And if somebody say breaks the law, then you know it's it doesn't make you know, make sense for them to be able to get away with it. And in fact, it's imp important for the integrity of the platform as well. Um, that, um, you know, that these sorts of rules are imposed. So just just staying with that an anonymity thread for a second. Yeah. Um, and I, I absolutely get what you're saying. And obviously, if you did get into antisocial, you, you could go down that track back route. But um, the other issue I can sort of just, I'd be interested to know whether you've had any issues with, is, okay, so even the moderator, so doesn't know who's making the posting. So you have a position, a potential situation where a member of staff could, you know, come and say, okay, you know, the, the system in the council Fred runs is rubbish and blah, 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 and we could have something mm. better. And you could have, um, if, if, if that person is very ill-informed, maybe, and, and just has come up with something which is a bit naive and never going to work, you yeah. could have quite a negative polling response back you could, that, that says, actually, no, that, that, that's rubbish, it would never work. And you could end up with a very disenfranchised member of staff who you don't now know who they are. So actually, yeah. you've got quite a difficult management position because you know someone in your organisation has got a grumble, is expressing it, is all over the place. Yeah, you have no idea who this is. Yeah, is that does that is that an issue? Um, well, I mean, the the thing is, I suppose the two sides, the, so two answers to that in a way is that the um, your twenty fifty is effectively, and I would call it a collaboration platform rather than a communication platform, and obviously you know, that's you know, really because people are anonymous and the collaboration element of it would be for a proposal to be put forward and for all members of that community to work towards resolving the situation effectively that that person's found themselves in. You know, so so to the extent that someone's got, got a, a, a problem, so to speak, because of, say, a system not working, etc., your 2050 would be used in order to resolve that situation uh, effectively to the extent that someone's got a uh, you know a particular sort of personal issue um, and i don't know whether it would necessarily come to say, the bullying types of things or the sort of thing you know there, there, are, there could be some quite personal issues they're always obviously able to use the normal system within the organization anyway so if they've got a they've got quite a personal issue which needs to be resolved then mm. you know your 2050 is not going to be able to help them at an individual level because you know, as i say it's it's really there to, uh, to to enable people to share concerns for people to work together in order to resolve operational issues and as i say also making say, strategic suggestions etc so what what are the what you've got some unique features? So what are you the new, unique features about this that you like the look of and you think are the way forward? Yeah. Okay. So um, certainly you know, apart from the anonymity itself, um, one of the things is the moderation, which is important. Um, and again, moderation of um, uh, platforms um, comes into the news every now and again. Um, and one of the things about your 2050 is that the communities are moderated by the own community. So when somebody sets up, say a company sets up the, the platform, they may create, make um, two or three people um, the moderators. So that in terms of you know dealing with issues, you know, from just posting the questions at one end of the spectrum to maybe having to block a post if it's something inappropriate comes up. That is all done 
um, by you know, with, within uh, within the community. So it's not a question of it having to be done by the platform mm. um, okay. as such. So um, that's um, uh, that's one of the things um, mentioned earlier about the posting being permanent. Now um, I realise with a platform like this that um, there are lots of different types of tools that are available to organizations to be able to take surveys to monitor etc and i think one of the things that i hear um, within organizations is that suggestions are made surveys are done um and then all of a you know it seems like all of a sudden but it's not but a couple of months two three months down the road what's happened you know, the survey's been done, has it been filed away, etc. But, you know, with your 2050, because it's constantly available and with anybody's login, they can go in, any proposals that have been made and any answers that are given, they just re they, they re remain there. So, you know, th and that, that's an important feature in order to keep the pressure <laughs> on the people that can make change happen. Um, yeah. And, you know, again, I think it's something that we've all... Um, seen another thing with the, with the platform again it, it's you, if it's, you know, depending on what it is but again not necessary i think with some of the similar products in the um survey space is there's a search function you know so again you know i can give an example um that um i've got a um a client that's been using the platform for over three years now which is um is actually another is another uh, business network um and um so they've had lots of questions about how to you know, be better at, at, at networking you know for example you know you might ask you know how, how the question how do you follow up after a one-to-one -one meeting you know you put the question out like that and you know you'll get a lot of really interesting answers coming back um as to you know, what different techniques and processes now if that question's there uh, and then six months later somebody joins that particular community I said all the content is permanently and you don't just pick up from the day you joined you have access to all of the content which has been there in this case you know we the last sort of three yeah. three years of content you know over 100 questions several hundred answers so there's a lot of data in there um and then you could go in and, and, and search the sort of topics and um, that you're interested in Brilliant. So, so uh, finally, for me, I can see we've got at least one question in the chat box, which we'll come to in a second. Mm. Uh, but the question for me, just to kind of wrap up the the bit that we're doing here, is, yeah, uh, it's is that obviously you're it, it's your product. You're excited about it. What what are you what are you looking forward to? Is the exciting development the for for your twenty fifty as you move forward? Right. Okay. Well, thank you very much. And I suppose you know, particularly sort of you know, it's, it's not completing the circle because I want this to be running for some time, but we're coming into an election year and we're mentioning um you know what the how the idea came about i'd love the um, platform to be able to be used in the upcoming elections and in fact you know if anybody i think particularly maybe if somebody knew somebody who was thinking of standing as an independent because you know all organizations you know particularly political parties i mean again that's always a possibility but you know, in the world of politics, some thinking of standing and they want to sort of be canvassing people in their community, asking for policy ideas, et cetera. Um, coming into this election year, um, you know, I'd, I'd love the platform to be able to to be used, um, again, giving people a voice within their community, whether it's within the ward or con con constituency, um, and, and, and helping someone who's prepared to put themselves... <laughs> forward into the, the wild world of politics to actually find out um, what the electorate are thinking. So brilliant. Great. Yeah, yeah, election year. Fantastic. Yeah. What, a, what a great application for that. Yeah. Alan, really interesting. Really interesting. Product, really much. interesting to hear from you. Now, I know, John, you put a question in there in the in the chat box and so is Jane. So let's just take a couple of questions here. Um, nice. And uh, in the last couple of minutes, John, do you want to just uh, voice your question? Yeah, yeah. One of them is that um, Let's say that you had a, a suggestion on how to follow up a one-to-one, -one, as was the example. How yeah. do you know, because the respond uh, response is anonymous, how do you know the quality of the suggestion, or is it simply there to stimulate your own mind, assess it, 
uh, in your own time to, to decide whether it works for you or not. Yeah, so the, so that that's right. It it it, it is the case of um, it being the idea. So you know, you see the idea that someone's put forward. You know how, how to follow up, and then you decide for yourself. Effectively, does that work for me? Do I think it's a good idea? Uh, and that and that's you know that's the sort of really interesting thing when you and there are these debates that we hear you know in the in, 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 on the media. You know, should we listen to the specialists? You know, yeah, well, I was just going to say, as a, as a follow-up question to that, you know, if Pete answered that question, I'd consider it quite strongly because he's in the space and I'd respect yeah. his opinion. Yeah. Whereas if it was just, you know, Bill Smith from yeah. the butcher shop that had only ever been to one networking event, yeah. Yeah. you're saying that it doesn't make any difference. In fact, it's better to disqualify Pete the expert because it he, he may have a biased opinion. That That's right. So it, 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 that that's the way that it's working, really. So... You know, it is a question of, you know, people thinking, oh, do you think, you know, do I think that will work better for me? And they maybe try it. So it, it, at least it's a suggestion which you can try. Uh, and it may be, um, you know, something that you're you're, you're uncomfortable with. Um, but as you, as you say, it is stripping away, you know, whether or not someone's an expert or not. Um, and it's just, you know, the idea and, and the power of the idea. Um, Brilliant. Cool. And and I know Jane's got a couple of questions there in the yeah. in the, the chat box. So Jane, do you want to just uh, fire away? Yeah. So my first question is: Is there a minimum size community that is associated to? Yeah. So so I mean, effectively, the smallest community would probably have um, say twenty people or something like that. But the thing is, what we always have to allow for is the number of people that are going to log on within a community so if there is say a, a business um and there's 200 people there depending on the organization you might get say 30 40 percent create a login um and then say 30 percent of those you know log in on a, you know actually use it on a regular basis so um but yeah no the, the I, I think you know the the, the minimum is probably you know around 15 or or 20 and then there's also not really a maximum uh, as as such um and you know it does come down to say how how engaged people get and how much they want to want to use it and then you know that, that really is you know a kind of quite quite a a cultural thing you know how much people are prepared to to change you know the way that they do things yeah and a second slightly odd question i know but i mm. often live in a world of compliance um one of the things that struck me in this you talked about um illegal purposes and who has the right to take it down if it is being used for illegal purposes and if, if, if a community was using it fine but then somebody took off down a thread of how do you build a bomb yeah <laughs> yes what what happens in that situation well, I mean, anything that was uh, evidently illegal would just be removed, you know, by by the platform. Uh, I mean, effectively, uh, if it happened within a community, you know, because I belong to you know, various communities on it myself, I don't belong to um, all of them. So, so something happened, um, and then it would be re reported by um, the, the moderator. But also, effectively, um, which is important there is an ability for all users of the platforms it's not just the moderator to report um a, 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 you know, these sorts of serious breaches as well mm -hmm. you know, so that's that's um, brilliant John, um, <clears throat> sorry alan thank you so much thank you so much it's really interesting well, thank you very much i really appreciate oh, it mark's got his hand up very very quickly mark yes. because we're just we're just crashing uh loose space here just but yeah. very quickly very quickly are are the the, the subject matters and, and the platforms are they categorized into like categories like health and well-being you know is there a kind of categorization right so within the communities people would find that via the search engine there's another part of the platform which i haven't uh, had the, uh, the the time to mention today yet which is actually um a topic area and and for that space all members of all communities have access to it and there are there indeed topics there such as 
the environment, even networking, that sort of thing. So, so th there are categories where, and again, then discussions will evolve um, yeah. within those topics. Yeah. Thanks, Alan. Yeah. Um, gosh, that really interesting and some good interaction thank, there. So yeah, thank, thank you, you very much. Yeah, thank and you, if everybody. anybody's um, you know wants to speak more about it, you know, please let me know. Hi, uh, good morning, all. So we're welcoming here this morning, Kath Wood from Medigold. So can you please tell us, Kath, what Medigold is, what it does? Yes, yeah, so uh, Medigold is a um, one of the largest occupational health businesses in the country, Fam family run, still family run, um, started by the family, still run by the family, um, and provides all of the kind of normal occupational health services, but also is branching out into a wider range of things, which is where my team comes in, because um, we're one of those add-on services that can support businesses um, a little bit more around the prevention rather than cure. So occupational health obviously picks up when people are are ill and absent from work a lot of what we do is about education uh, and awareness and looking at supporting businesses to put changes into place to prevent people from reaching the point of needing occupational health so that's where my bit of the business the disability training and consultancy comes in um, to be able to work with businesses about and educate uh, key people in the business around the topics of disability mental health health and well-being more broadly and certainly neurodiversity which is our, one of our most popular topics at the moment. What made you go this direction with your career? So um, I've always worked in the field of disability right from leaving university um, and I started off with kind of supporting people in sort of home life through, through care services then moved into employment services where I was supporting people into work and, and I guess I've always had a bit of a passion for supporting people to have equal opportunities um, and really to have an um, opportunity of employment is such a really important key part of life because it really enables people to have loads more opportunities in their life as they're able to have a, a good career and develop um, their careers. Um, also kind of partly to do with a bit of lived experience and my own experience of, of having a disability really kind of pushes me forward into this and, and actually really now I, I really enjoy the fact that now I get to go and educate employers because that gives many more opportunities to many more uh, sort of thousands of disabled people if businesses are ready uh, and supportive it can make a massive difference to a, a wider group so this part of my career is probably the most proud and the most impact i think i'm having um which is kind of why i do the job i do it's nice to have the paycheck at the end of the end of the month don't get me wrong but i like to make a difference i like to see the change and impact so i think this is the the job that's been able to provide the biggest opportunity for that so what what does your actual job involve then so you, you your title is a disability consultant so do you actually go out to businesses and uh, and train and educate absolutely so um the main main is really understanding from a business what their challenges are and looking at what solutions we might already have so um talking to businesses about why why they want to learn a bit more around disability sometimes we'll go out and analyze a business and help them to become disability confident um, and certainly things come up in that process that businesses want to resolve um, but really it's about discussing with the employees what what are their main challenges who they need um, developing or training what are the resources that they need to be able to educate the wider empl employee group um, and then if we haven't got it already developed then my job is to scope it out and develop that new solution. Um, and that's really how our product portfolio grows because every time a business asks for a bespoke solution, it's usually something that other businesses will want as well. So um, our product portfolio grows year on year because of the, the variety of things that businesses ask us for. So we try to be very responsive, but mm -hmm. obviously that helps us grow all the different things that we can do with a business. So um, what sort of businesses, I mean, are, are they smaller business well, you know what sort of size do you go from to what 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 uh, I mean, do you have a special area or is a you know do they tend to focus on types of businesses we actually cover pretty much all sizes and all sectors um what i would say and part of the reason why i've been doing a bit more work with business shows and a bit more networking is is to grow our resources for smaller businesses so medigold as a as a service has a um, a scheme called Protect, which is occupational health for smaller businesses. So rather than um, so that that's really helpful. But we our add-on services need to be developed more specifically for smaller and medium-term businesses. So we can 
bespoke it to any size of business. But I'm really interested to find out from people what the needs are for a smaller business. So um, I've been kind of joining a few more networks, been, been working with the Federation of Small Businesses as well, visiting a lot of their networking events to try and find out a bit more about that to make sure we're not missing anything. Um, so one of the areas that came out of those discussions was the mental health of leaders of small businesses that actually we do a lot of stuff to support people to learn how to support their workforce, but we forget about the individual themselves. So we do a lot of managers work, but we don't do a lot of leadership work. So that's something that I'm going to be um, looking at in the next sort of few weeks. And that's been, a, been uh, as a response to things that have been discussed with me in these kind of networking events. So it's been really helpful. But if I learn I'm fact finding as much as anything in a lot of these meetings as well, which has been really helpful. Yes, the leadership, um, the leadership, um, they, they need, they do need help. <laughs> they do Absolutely. Need, they do. So is there, are there any types of specific, specific sectors that you, you tend to find come to you or is it just every day is a different one? Yeah, I mean, that's part of the joy of the, of the, of the job, to be fair, because actually mm -hmm. I never know what I'm going to be, um, which kind of business I'm going to be talking to. We do do quite a lot of work with local councils and housing associations. Um, I guess that's because of their public duty that they they want to be able to um, offer um, the best quality services to their broad range of customers. So we do a few different customer services businesses, manufacturing, logistics. Um, um, in, interestingly, all sorts of different. We've even worked with um, overseas businesses as well that have services in the UK but are overseas. And it's really interesting to see the contrast between how we deal with mental health and disability here to how it's dealt with in other countries. So that's been quite a fascinating thing that some of the projects have done until the end of 2023 was around working with businesses that have um, European um, and worldwide offices. And, you know, we, we're looking at branching out into supporting those businesses, but getting to understand that they perhaps don't have the supporting resources and processes behind a lot of that so we help them a little bit more with that and that's where the consultancy comes in so apart from training what i do as a consultant is really understand if the businesses need help with policies and processes um and we can we even do things like employee focus groups so it's interesting to see what you were, were saying about um getting honest opinions being an independent focus group can actually really help that so i really like the the idea of anonymity because that's that again is the, the truth really will come out when people um have the have that anonymity but focus groups interviews kind of understand the business reviewing policies and processes so we do all of that as well because actually you need a whole rounded sort of process and strategy for this you can't just train one group of people and expect to solve all the problems in your business so it's quite nice to be able to do that well-rounded um do you have businesses your know, clients come back to you after you know it's, it's not just a uh, come in and show us this um, you know, yeah, back in six months 12 attention, months attention and repeat business is a really key it's, it's probably our biggest proportion of our our business is returning customers um, mm -hmm. and i think that's a really useful thing to be able to know that we've had an impact but also that they want to come back and widen that or update it because obviously um workforces change on a regular basis so quite often we're going back and, and delivering to a next the next cohort we deliver things like mental health first aid so we'll go in and deliver the refreshers so we do have quite a lot of repeat business um and that's quite so that's a it's a nice compliment to the to the services when people want to come back for more yes okay i can imagine so I mean, you help um so how do you start to formulate a, you know help your client with a, a, a mental health strategy to sort of start how you know how, how do you kick that off and so for me, the most important thing at the start is is kind of getting a bit of a benchmark of where you are as a business, what, what's already happening. Because first of all, you need to understand what the challenges are. And secondly, you need to understand where you are now. So you can see a difference when you put the strategy into place. So things like looking at your disclosure information, absence data, and what that tells you about mental health and, and other disabilities. And then certainly looking at any exit interviews that you do, because sometimes the most honest people are the people who are going out the door. So it does give you that real understanding of where you are. So that's a bench benchmark. Um, policies are important, getting the foundation in place. So things that I would probably suggest people look at is absence management to start with, because that's probably one of the biggest ones that can influence mental health and disability. Um, policies are only 
half the job because actually need to be implemented properly and that's really why i think manager training probably features quite early on in that strategy so we train lots of different key people but align managers are probably one of the most important ones because they are the the implementers of the policy and we'd look at maybe looking at um, an alternative routes to support maybe through something like a mental health champion or mental health first aider um, because actually not everybody wants to talk to their boss about their mental health so that's kind of an important part to think about um, wider awareness raising whether this features last or first um, we discussed with the client but looking at how they can use national events to start talking about mental health across the business so for example first of february we've got time to talk day really fantastic um, opportunity to utilize all their free resources share it across your business and get the conversation started without actually having to invest too much time in generating resources yourself so we we can provide a calendar of suggested events um, and organizations that they could link with around those events so you know it's a bit chicken and egg do you do the awareness before you change the policy do you do the awareness before you train the managers it's a it's a, a personal preference from the business point of view but realistically you need to make sure the sort of core um, skills and understanding and policies are there so that when people do come forward after you've done the awareness raising the, your people are ready to have a conversation and to put the support into place mm, i think that's kind of the, the main steps sounds really simple but um obviously we we support along the way and and can can coach a business through some of those um, elements as well and you're dealing with people so that's never simple anyway is it no no <laughs> Oh, it's part of the joy, but it's also part of the stress, isn't it? It's yeah. like it's, it, you you can you can put lots of things into place, but you never know quite how people are going to respond to it. No, no. And I imagine your team has grown considerably over the the last few years. Um, yeah, we've cert we've certainly certainly seen a change in uh, the. Well, we've always had mental health as one of our key key deliveries. So most most of our business has. I would say probably about 60 to 70 percent has always been mental health but what i have seen is a more receptive audience so we've been slightly busier but i would say that what we're saying has been received better because i think there's more of a general acceptance that anybody can experience poor mental health because most of us have probably had a period of it during the lockdowns that we've experienced so i do think generally i've got a more receptive audience every time i train um but when we're slightly busier on the, on the mental health side. Um, but things like neurodiversity have certainly started to come into the forefront in the last six to, to eight months. Um, so I think we're going to be uh, busier on that front going forward um, as well. Yes, very much so, very much so. Okay, that's that's really interesting. Um, thank you for that, Cav. Has anyone welcome. got any questions? You've been very thorough. Yeah, no, no questions. Well, I put my contact details in in there. So join yeah, me. no, that'd be great. Then ask away. I'm more than happy to. to and um, I'm sure we'll see you at the the shows. And uh, I might see if you want to pop along to Cheltenham one morning for our net, network meeting to discuss absolutely, mental health. Absolutely. That's a, that's going to be a topic or two or three uh, over the next few months. Absolutely. Anyway. Yeah, if anybody was want to link in and uh, want me to come and do a little talk on anything, um, I'm, I'm more than happy to do that. I think it's really good to be able to do a little introductory talk, start people talking about the topic and see where it takes them. And then they can come back whenever they need anything more um, formal. Mm, very much so. Thank you. Thanks, Louise. And thanks, everybody, for, for joining and, and giving me the opportunity. <laughs>